Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and I finally um, uh, dialed my OCD down enough to review Captain America and the Invaders by Roy Thomas, and more importantly, Jerry Ordway. So I have this thing when the comic is too nice and I'm too excited about it and it's, you know, quote, special, I, uh, I tend to put off reading it forever. That's why I still haven't done uh, Batman Year Two, uh, the New Gods Compendium, the uh, uh, Mr. Miracle Artist Edition. Uh, uh, the, the, actually, I, honestly, I just straight up can't find Extinction Agenda. I moved to like four times. And I have it, I just don't know where it is, I, which I consider to be a different thing than being lost. Um, but this one came out like two or three weeks ago, and I kept like passing it up because I was like, nah. Uh, uh, Jerry Ordway is <laughs> a big deal, and I feel like his his status in comics has kind of been memory hold. Uh, if you were there in the late 80s when he did the Batman movie adaptation, it was freaking huge. We're talking hundreds of thousands of copies. It was available everywhere. Like every kid at least saw it. Um, and not only that, <laughs> but, but um, the art was just amazing. I would put the art from the Batman movie adaptation, I would put that up with any of the quote real Batman books, you know, since that's kind of like a, it's got like an asterisk because it's like, eh, it's just a movie adaptation. Who cares? Um, but just fantastic stuff. And then he did a run on, I forget which Superman book he had. I think it was Adventures of Superman. And I believe he wrote and drew it. And I was never a Superman fan, but I, I read his time. What did he have? Crime Buster or whoever that guy was. They're, they were good stories. So um, this is, what what is this book? Is it a miniseries? Is it a one-shot? Nobody knows. Uh, it's a one-shot as far as I can tell. It seems to be tied to... 80 year anniversary of Marvel slash Timely Comics um, but it's just like do you want to tell a good story and this good story was actually really good in fact I forgot to do something I was gonna I'm not really an expert in British history so they're talking about Edward the Duke of Windsor and I guess for a while he was a governor of the Bahamas because something him and his wife had met with Hitler and then he was kind of politically on the outs with Churchill I don't know if that's true <laughs> I, I know those people exist but I don't know if it's true but that's the underpinning of the story or it's kind of like the the backstory of it so I really really like that you know one of the big things is it's very very interesting when you take something real like World War II and even the build-up to World War II, and then you build a character around that, Captain America, who actually started two years before we got into the war, uh, 1939, and we got in at the, the December of 1941. But it had been building, you know, the writing was on the wall. Um, one of the things I think has been lost is that we now aren't tied to anything real. When our enemies were the Axis powers, we created heroes to fight the Axis powers, and then we defeated them. There's this great issue of The Question uh, by uh, Denny O'Neill and Dennis Cowan where um, there's a... How do I say it? <laughs> uh, Vic Sage has a kind of sort of daddy that isn't his daddy that he's roommates with. Uh, anyway, I forget the guy's name. It's like this older guy who's kind of like an advisor and they live together. I forget how that happened. Um, but his brother comes to visit, and they're talking about World War II, and his job was, you know, to, to make comics. And he's like, well, you know, uh, we won the war. I won the war. My team won the war. He's like, what? What are you talking about? He's like, before we beat them, in reality, we beat them in the comic book pages. You know, we inspired them, and we gave hope, because it was a slog back then. You know, when I went to war, it was, you know, uh, well seven months the first time, four months the second time, 11 months the third time. But there was always like a sunset. You know, you, you were going to go home at some point uh, that was pretty much predictable within a few weeks. Um, uh, but back when my grandpa, you know, uh, he was uh, anti-aircraft artillery, it was like, welcome to the U.S. Army. You're going to fight until the war's over. When's it going to be over? I don't know. Maybe couple of years or longer um, 
So you really had to, you know, it, it was a long haul. You had to inspire them. Right now, one of the biggest problems, and I think why things are so neurotic and kind of crazy, is that we have to get... Back then, it was normies. It was normies just reading the newspapers like, Hey, I don't like what these jamokes is doing in Germany. You got to watch on, on that Mussolini fella. Oh, I'd like to paste him in the chops. You know, but they were seeing something that was building a growing evil and they were taking it on. Whereas right now, like how many times has Captain America fought ISIS or Al Qaeda or the Taliban? And a couple of comics, like he's coming back from one of those missions and then they're like, ah, bad FBI agents. This is something like nobody's willing to say, like, what is the dominant threat right now and there's pretty it's pretty peaceful time so we don't have a big existential threat uh sweetcast was talking about um you know the sjw's always like to be like oh, oh, punch nazis it's like pfft, couldn't punch your way out of a paper bag and i guarantee if it was world war ii you'd be wearing a dress to get out of being enlisted so go away with your punch nazis you had a chance to go punch you know current day nazis isis taliban and al-qaeda and you didn't take it so don't don't brag about yourself because you put on a mask and hit someone in the back of the head with a bike lock and then you ran away. Oh, and the person you hit was just someone who doesn't have all the same political thoughts as you do. Um, so anyway, let's get oh, let's open. Oh, okay. That's one way to avoid a copyright strike. Don't even open the book. So we get we get some you know good uh, art, classic thing. Uh, Captain America jumps through a boarded up window punches Nazis. Now here's why SJWs suck, or perhaps reason 10,439. This is where the story ends for, for SJWs. There was the Nazis and then they got punched. The end. I'm good. You're bad. With SJWs, everything is about ego and destroying people. It's like, you know, it's like that, you know, like a witch hunt type of thing. I called you a Nazi that proves you're a Nazi, and I'm not. No, 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 no. It just proves that you're a thought, and you can't handle people having, like, slightly different beliefs than you. It's ridiculous. Uh, so we live in a kind of clown world right now, where you have, like, the director of Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, and he's, like, openly supporting Antifa, who assault people every single place they go. I'm not saying Antifa are the modern-day Nazis. I mean, there's no real modern day equivalent um but you know the big evils of the day you know taliban isis al-qaeda that's like the people who are going to kill thousands of thousands of people and have you know horrible plans um not this endless it's like oh you voted for someone else different than me so i'm gonna <laughs> tear gas you or what, what do they do they oh they'll put like a uh, urine in a water bottle oh milkshakes Milkshake, yeah. I'm gonna throw them. Why, why is it always milkshakes with these weirdos? They have walnuts in their brain, I swear. You know, like they're a little kid and they like push a little thing up into their nostrils. It gets into their brain and it grows. Now they got walnuts in there. Like the different hemispheres of the brain can't communicate with each other. So then, you know, they capture this the Bund. The Bund is like American sympathizers. And then he's like, okay, on to my next uh, thing. And then they're going down to the Bahamas. They got a fairly... It was weird. It was complicated, but it was simple. It was, it was written very, very well. It's Roy Thomas uh, writing this. Um, and uh, skip a, a couple pages for the copyright god. It was just good. It's just good. Like, I know this might look a little boring, but it had to, like this good clip. Like, I was really, really into it. Um, so uh, we get to meet the invaders. They don't, it's not their first team up, but it's their first kind of meeting each other. And look at these awesome, like, battle scenes. I never really was into the Human Torch. So this Human Torch is going to be, you know, one of the, you know, unlocks, like, in 10 years of the public domain thing. And uh, I was always like, nah. Captain America, Batman, Superman, but the original Human Torch, uh, Jim Hammond, eh, I don't really care. No, no, no. Now I'm starting to see it. You imagine this? He's, he's basically Battlefield Demon. Battlefield Fire Demon. And that's cool. Um, so then, uh, Punch Nazis and uh, a little appearance by the Submariner. Um, just, a good, just a good story, man. Like, 
really just fantastic. I'm really happy about it. It, it of course, got complete... It, it, it got instantly memory hold. Like, it came out. They didn't promote it. I think I saw, like, one bleeding cool. It's like, Captain America punches Nazis. We get it. We get it. We get it. Trump won and your brain melted. For people who don't know, it's like, oh, aren't you supposed to punch Nazis? Uh, uh, punch Nazis started building in, tw- in America in 2016... Uh, when the left kind of saw they were going to lose and they were freaking out. So they decided, let's let's say something that's unassailable. Hey, punch Nazis. And you go, oh, okay. But then they would punch people who weren't Nazis. And they're like, oh, remember when you said it was cool to punch Nazis? They're like, yeah, we're just, yeah. That person's a Nazi. Are they? <laughs> are they? There's not a lot of Nazis. And you guys are somehow finding people to punch at every single gathering you go to, Antifa, it's starting to look like you just like punching anyone and then saying they're Nazis afterwards. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell uh, for notifications. Thanks to everyone given to the GoFundMe and the Indiegogo. Not just my Indiegogo. There are some... Oh my gosh. Have you all seen Star Blades by Kyle Ritter? Oh my gosh. I, I'm very interested in where this is going to end up in his first 30 days. I think, they, I think that he has a 60-day campaign. This is going to be huge. Everyone's flipping it. I remember he showed me and Ethan and a couple other people. I was talking to Ethan. I said, have you seen the Star Blades? He's like, oh, this thing's going to be 200000 250000 for a first, for a first time uh, crowdfunding. Just amazing. And then we got John Malin's Graveyard Shift 2 doing incredible, uh, uh, what do you call it? Good old... Jawbreakers, God King, doing better than Jawbreakers Lost Souls in the same amount of time. So these are uh, very, very uh, good times. Anyway, thanks for watching. Oh, and uh, I got the latest issue of Green Lantern, but it was a to-be-continued st- uh, story, and it's just kind of like, eh? It was very, very clearly... I, I like this run because I've done a lot of just, like, one-shot, done-in-one stories, but this wasn't, so I was just like... <sighs> okay, so I didn't review it. Um, I still got this Wolverine by Larry Hama, and then these two public domain books. I'm going to do the two of them and talk about that tomorrow. Then, new comics. Thanks for watching. Bye.